Anna, I need to talk to you. Sandra, 18 years old, timidly knocked on the door of her boyfriend's house. Frank, he was not at home, so Sandra, realizing she was in for an unpleasant conversation, decided to tell her future mother-in-law that she was about to become a grandmother. The girl had been throwing up for weeks, so she took the risk of taking a pregnancy test, which came back positive. Sandra almost cried from surprise, but she realized in time that it would be bad for the baby. She decided to break the news to Frank, but he wasn't home. What was so urgent you wanted to tell me, a frown appeared on Frank's mother's disgruntled face. She never liked Sandra, the woman thought she was frivolous. When the girl announced that she was expecting Frank's child, the woman's face became even more unhappy. Well, you've got something to cheer about. My son left this morning, he got a job application to turn in. You'd better use your head before you go to bed with a guy. But understand, this is your future grandchild or granddaughter. Sandra almost cried, Frank and I love each other and want to be together. Come on, when he left, he didn't say a word about your great love to death, and a grin appeared. Let's put it this way, I haven't seen you, you haven't seen me either. You shouldn't tell Frank about the pregnancy, he has to study to get a proper profession and be able to provide for his own family. And you want to deprive him of his future. Why did you come here with your pregnant belly? You know I didn't tell my parents about the baby, Sandra said through her tears. So, you made me happy with the news, and I sarcastically asked, you should have thought of that earlier. Well, as you can see, I'm not involved. They'll kick me out of the house if they find out about the baby, the girl whispered as she continued to cry. Well, what can I say? Congratulations to you. It's called adulthood, everyone has to take responsibility for their actions. And if you didn't know that until now, don't take up my time. Do me a favor, Frank isn't and won't be, and you deal with your kid on your own. Anna slammed the door in front of Sandra's nose and walked proudly into the house. She purposely turned on the TV loudly, letting her know that the dialogue was over and she had more important things to do than talk about some child. What if this baby isn't my son's? Is she determined to pin this baby on us and cover her shame? Anna raised her son alone after the tragic death of her husband. Like most mothers who devoted themselves entirely to their families and children, she knew no limits in setting boundaries. And she only knew what she was allowed to do as a mother, and she was allowed everything, including who her only son should date. Every girl who appeared in Frank's life was strictly analyzed by Anna. She didn't like girls who were too independent in character, who smoked, who drank alcohol, who led a carefree and idle life. Similarly, she hated girls who had absolutely nothing, thinking that such a party would be a burden on her son. And now, who does that Sandra think she is? Does she really think that Frank will ask her to marry him as soon as she tells him about her pregnancy? Thought the woman. Sandra walked toward her parents' house. The girl realized that her only hope had just collapsed. Frank had left and hadn't even warned her. How could he do this to her? When she reached home, Sandra wiped away her tears and walked in as if nothing had happened. Her mother paid her no attention, busy watching another soap opera. The girl went into her room and pulled out a small suitcase where she began to put her things. After thinking about it, she pulled out a small box where she put the money she earned. Sandra was working part-time as a cleaner at the local store and was saving money for her studies. After counting it out, the girl was very upset. Yeah, the amount is too small, we'll have to do things differently. She walked quietly into her parents' room and pulled out the envelope where her mother kept small amounts of money for running the household. Sandra hesitated a little but opened the envelope anyway and took out some large bills. I'm sorry, Mom, but I have no other way out. Sitting by the window, Sandra took out a piece of paper, wrote a short note on it, and left, holding her suitcase. Where was she going? The girl herself did not know. There was one thought running through her head, she had disgraced herself and her parents, who would not be able to forgive her sin. And she should stay away from her own home so that no one would reproach her with her pregnancy or insult her parents. Her mother had always been very strict about her daughter's future family. Watch it from me, 
don't start a relationship before you get married in our time first there was a wedding then there were children not the other way around half an hour later the bus pulled up and sandra got on she drove feeling fear of her own future where would she go what would she do how would she feed her child however these were questions she didn't have an answer to yet the first order of business was to decide where she would stay for the night and maybe not just for the night when all the passengers left, Sandra, being one of the last, saw an elderly woman standing near the entrance to the train station. She was holding a homemade sign that read room for rent, and Sandra felt that she was getting some hope. The girl timidly approached the stranger and asked, Hello, how much does it cost to rent a room? The old woman gave her a quick glance and answered grimly, We can agree on the price when you see the conditions. Are you coming? Apparently, she needed money too, and Sandra obediently followed the woman. The house was in the private sector, with clean spacious rooms, heating, and other amenities. The old woman watched Sandra's reaction carefully. Well, does it fit? I have a bed, see, there's a closet in the corner, you can put your clothes there. One condition, no parties, especially with alcohol. Sandra agreed. And what kind of parties could there be in her condition? The girl soundly counted out the necessary amount of money and settled in her new dwelling. The room was in the far corner of the corridor. It was usually quiet and peaceful there. Time was passing. Sandra's belly was gradually enlarging. When the landlady saw this, she did not make a scandal of it. Oh, we all make mistakes when we're young. How could we not? She sighed. Have you even registered for pregnancy? If not, I can help you, I have a doctor I know. Sandra was grateful to her hostess for her help, she clearly needed help. The girl found that constant worry about her future caused her blood pressure to rise. Her legs and whole body ached, heart pains, which she had never had before, began to bother her more often. When she came back for another checkup, Sandra could not stand it and cried. The doctor just sighed, oh, girls, what kind of stupid things do you do for guys? It's too late to cry, we have to think about what to do with the baby. I don't know, Sandra cried quietly. She felt completely helpless and alone, unnecessary to her own family and herself. I wanted to raise my daughter on my own, but I'm not sure I can. I'm all alone, and there's no one to help me. The doctor looked at her sadly and said softly, I understand everything perfectly. But if you can't provide for a child yourself, take care of him, it's better to give him to someone who wants one but can't have a baby. I know so many families who dream of having a baby but can't, you think about it, okay? Sandra nodded, she spent the rest of the term in heavy thought. And when it came time to give birth, the girl already knew that she would give up the baby, even if for a while, until she found a good job. She saw no other option for herself. At the sight of a woman in labor with swollen legs and a pale face from anemia, the midwife spluttered, What do you look like? Hurry to the delivery room, her blood pressure is dropping. Sandra didn't understand why there was such a commotion around her. Doctors and nurses were running back and forth. They were saying something loudly to each other. She could only make out individual words that came through the thick wall. There's a lot of bleeding, we're losing her. We need a defibrillator right away. Half an hour later, the doctor on duty with a grim face stood outside the entrance to the emergency room smoking. His colleagues knew that he had just lost all chance of saving a young woman in labor who was having a very problematic delivery because of her blood pressure spikes and internal bleeding. What's wrong with the baby? The doctor inquired. Oh, the girl is fine, but the mother, the man shook his head sadly. There's nothing we can do for her anymore. So, little Angela, barely born, became one of the thousands of orphans. After the appropriate paperwork, the girl ended up in an orphanage where she grew up until she was three years old. Hello, little ones, the new employee Sarah cheerfully greeted her charges. She was young, cheerful, and very fond of children. That's why she chose the youngest group to teach them the simplest skills, drawing, cutting out, gluing, assembling constructors. Sarah worked as a volunteer on a project to help children without parents and was successful in her job. 
She could easily find common ground with any child, and the children loved her. One day, she brought little Angela to her group, who had previously been in another teacher's group. At the sight of a girl with thick beautiful hair on her head, a mole on her puffy left cheek, and big expressive blue eyes, Sarah's heart ached. The baby girl looked a lot like her daughter who had been gone for almost two years. The girl could not be saved, she was diagnosed with appendicitis very late. Sarah and her husband were inconsolable. It was grief that led the woman to go to the project to volunteer, so she could take her mind off the grieving memories. However, the arrival of Angela turned Sarah's world upside down. She kept imagining her dead daughter and marveled at the resemblance of the girls. It just can't be, Sarah pulled out her phone with shaking hands and began to look at the photo of the girl from the orphanage. Like twins, the woman whispered, spellbound, not paying attention to her tears. She couldn't wait for her husband, who would be home from work any minute. Her husband returned and saw Sarah sitting silently, staring at one point. Sarah, what's wrong with you? Are you all right? Instead of answering, his wife held out her phone to him. Doesn't that mean anything to you? She asked in a wistful voice. Who is it? Our daughter, the man whispered, unable to believe his eyes. But she's... Yes, she's been dead for two years now. But you won't believe it. Today, a girl from another group was transferred to my group. Her name is Angela, she's three years old. Her mother died when she was born, which means the little girl has been in an orphanage since birth. I've never seen such a resemblance. Sarah's husband couldn't take his eyes off the picture of the girl. Honey, I want an answer to a very important question. Have you ever cheated on me? Do you have children out of wedlock? Sarah had tears in her eyes. I don't believe there can be such similar children, and this is the first time I've ever seen this baby. I have no children out of wedlock, and I have never cheated on you, the man replied in a firm voice. Sarah lifted her tear-filled face at him and muttered, Then I want to adopt a little girl very much. It's important to me. Have it your way. Her husband pulled her close and stroked her hair. Let's take her to our place. In the morning, Sarah insisted that her husband go with her to the orphanage. I want you to see this girl for yourself. When the man saw Angela, tears welled up in his eyes. She was an exact replica of their daughter. Sarah, she looks so much like. Yes, that's what I told you. Let's adopt her, let her live with us. The paperwork took longer than the couple expected. However, they didn't tell anyone until the last moment that they wanted to take the girl for themselves. After all, it had been less than two years since their baby girl died. It's none of their business, but we wouldn't want to be reminded of what happened, he said. Still, we have to show Angela, Sarah replied. When that happy moment came, and little Angela was in her own room for the first time, a loving grandmother appeared. She had long suspected that her son and wife were up to something. What's gotten into them, the woman thought as she watched the couple's behavior. The mother thought her daughter-in-law's new pregnancy was the only way to explain what had happened. But she did not know that Sarah had been infertile for some unexplained reason right after her daughter's death. Here I am coming to see them, and they're going to give me the news they're having a baby. That would be great after all, you can't have a family without children and a reason. However, at the sight of Angela, who was laughing carefree, sitting on her bed and drawing something with her hands on a tablet, the woman staggered and sat down on a chair in the hallway. In a faint voice, she called out to her son, Frank, isn't that my granddaughter? Who's the little girl? Where did she come from? That's our daughter, Mom, Frank answered happily. We adopted her, took her out of the orphanage. She's a miracle, isn't she? Yes, Anna looked worried, and the man worried. Mom, are you all right? Tell me about her, the woman asked in a weak voice. Frank could only say that the girl's mother had died just after giving birth, and the baby girl had been raised in an orphanage where Sarah had met her, and she immediately made the decision to adopt a girl who looked strikingly like her dead daughter. Lord, forgive me for what I've done, and Anna could not hold back her tears. 
Frank realized that his mother had something to tell him before Sarah could see or hear anything. The man took his mother into the other room and looked at her questioningly. Come on, mother, tell me. Why are you having this reaction to Angela? I don't even know where to start, son, she sighed heavily. Remember when you dated that one girl before Sarah? Yes, her name was Sandra, her son prompted. So, the day you left to apply for a new job, Sandra came in. She said she was expecting your baby, but I wouldn't talk to her and kicked her out of the house. I didn't believe the baby was yours, I didn't want to believe it. I said you had to get a proper profession to feed your family. From what I heard, this Sandra left home the same day because she was afraid her parents wouldn't forgive her for being pregnant. She left, and I never heard from her again, and her parents didn't even remember her, as if she never existed. It turns out that if Sandra was pregnant by me, then Angela might be my daughter too. That's why they look so much alike. I didn't expect that from you, mother, said Frank, and the woman burst into tears again. Why didn't you tell me about it? Why did you keep quiet for so many years? Frank sat down across from his mother, before his eyes was the image of Sandra's. He remembered her, there was a significant age difference between them when they had met. The girl was 17 years old, still in school. Frank had returned from the army at the time, had managed to finish college, and was preparing to go to university. However, meeting Sandra made him change his plans. Frank was so much attracted to the girl that he forgot about the preparation for graduation. The young man actively looked after the cheerful, sociable, and beautiful girl. Soon, Sandra realized that she was ready to reciprocate his feelings, and that night, Frank became her first and only man. It was on her birthday when he came to congratulate her and took her for a motorboat ride on the river. They had a good time, and before they parted, the girl said sadly that she didn't want to go home. It's such a lovely evening, I don't even want to go home. My mom's going to tell me I'm out late again. I feel so happy right now. Well, I hope it's because of me, Frank thought. He was joking but still wanted to move the conversation in the right direction to explain himself to the girl. When she first responded to his kiss, he was already struggling to contain himself. Frank fondly promised the girl, you and I will always be together. Don't be afraid. However, his words remained just words, largely thanks to Anna. She could not understand what was so special her son, so smart and charming, found in this simple girl. So when Sandra came and informed her of her pregnancy, the woman knew she was obliged to make sure this girl never appeared in her son's life again. Well, at least she'll get away from Frank. Anna was very pleased with herself. When Frank returned in the evening, the woman acted as if nothing had happened. She could see that her son was coming home gloomier by the day and pretended to attribute his worries to the upcoming competition at his future job. Son, don't be so nervous or you won't get hired. You've got a lot of studying to do, so save your nerves, please. When Frank got the job, the first thing he did was to inform his mother. He also let her know that, as Sarah was working with him, a girl from a respectable family whose parents are professors. Upon hearing this, Anna was delighted. Son, you shouldn't miss out on a girl like that. A smart, educated spouse, what could be better for you? Oh, and her parents' connections might prove very useful. And she kept up with her son until he said he wanted to marry Sarah. There was no limit to the loving mother's happiness when she learned that her daughter-in-law had become pregnant right after the wedding. The woman tried not to think of Sandra, who had gone off to an unknown destination. If she really wanted my son, she would have come and found him. The most surprising thing was that Frank behaved as if Sandra had never been in his life. He seemed preoccupied with something for a while after his marriage, but with the birth of his daughter, he switched completely to his new relationship. And now fate had it so that both Frank and Anna were deprived of something they treasured, a baby girl who passed away from an illness. At the thought of this, Anna began to go crazy, imagining how her little only granddaughter suffered. But now, in her place, another girl was sitting. The elderly woman lowered her head and covered her face with her hands. This is all because of me. If I told you about Sandra in time, none of this would have happened. 
I am very sorry to that little girl's mother, to you. I'm sorry, son. They didn't know that their every word was being heard by Sarah, who was standing outside the door. Sarah, where are you? On the threshold of the room stood Frank. He knew by the look on his wife's face that she had heard everything. Sarah, let me explain. Anna turned to her, but the girl stopped her. There's nothing to explain. I've heard everything. So, Angela is Frank's daughter by his other girlfriend. Her name was Sandra, and she died in childbirth. Yes, I just found that out too, Frank looked at his wife pleadingly. But that was before I met you. I swear to you, I never thought I could cheat on you. That's what happened, it's just that I had met Sandra before, and I had no idea she was expecting a child with me. I've always loved you and our girl. But what about Angela? Sarah pointed a glance at the little girl who was bouncing merrily in her room. Weren't we going to adopt her regardless of who her parents were? I mean, she was orphaned after her mother died. Let her be with us, Frank said. Let her, she's no stranger to us anyway. She is your daughter, and she will be my daughter now too, Sarah said firmly and exhaled with relief. It's good that it was resolved that way. So my granddaughter stays here with us? Of course, she will be with us, replied Sarah, looking fondly at her adopted daughter. And you, son, can you forgive me? The woman looked pleadingly at her son, who looked back at her with quiet sadness. How can I not forgive you? You are my mother and our daughter's grandmother. Thank you for joining us today on Deep Stories. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video.